What is up, everybody? Fravis here with another episode of Magic the Gathering Online, not duels. And today, we're going to be playing Popper, because I love Popper. I have uh, several decks in Popper, uh, five or six actually, but online I only have two decks, and uh, it's a lot easier to record online, you might, you might figure. So, I'm going to do a very rare deck tech uh, of this deck... And as I'm saying it, I'm noticing, like, some cards are out of place, and I'm not, like... I thought I prepared this ahead of time. I didn't, because I suck. The game... The card... The deck... <laughs> the game is Magic the Gathering. The cards are right in front of you, and the deck is called Pig Trinket, also known as Bugs and Pigs. Um, it doesn't really have, like, an official name, so this is just sort of what it is. Uh, probably going to split this up into three separate videos, maybe four if I want to have... Actually, yeah, four, di four different videos. Um, deck Tech going to be this one, and then uh, three separate games, uh, one after another. Uh, I've, I've separated the cards out uh, in a way, so I think that it's a little bit easier to understand. Most of these uh, blue cards... The, the, the object of this game is to just create a giant machine, a creature-turning machine that eventually you get um, to be pretty unstoppable with. You you control the board in such a way that you, with with the help of Disturb Burial, uh, all these cheap little creatures that you have here just keep coming back over and over and over again, and you can't stop it. And you have plenty of removal. This entire stack of cards here, all these are removal, except for these two. These two right here are not, because I didn't put them in the right place. They should be over there with Disturb Burial. <laughs> Those are recurring cards. Uh, Chainer's Edict is fantastic. It's a pretty major popper stable. Uh, one in a black. A target opponent sacrifices a creature. So this gets around pretty much uh, anything. Like it, it doesn't matter if it's targeted. It doesn't matter if it sacrifices itself later. You have to you have to sacrifice a creature. Best part about this card is once you cast it, you can cast it again. Uh, from its graveyard. Now you might be looking at that cost flashback. Oh my god, seven? It's five and two black? Are you kidding me? That's You're never going to get there. You, no. No, you will get there. You get there very often, especially in this deck. It's very easy to get. Uh, so this card is essentially a two for one every time. Um, in a way, it almost reads target player sacrifices two, two creatures. Not quite, though. There's a lot of extra stipulations in there. Anyway, the four of, of this guy... I did... Oh, man, look how horrible this is. They're not even all together. All right, four of, of, of uh, this beautiful thing. Tragic Slip is targeted removal. Much better. Target creature gets minus one, minus one, and end of turn. Instant speed, and it's one black, except Morbid makes this a lot more relevant. Target creature gets negative 13, negative 13 until end of turn. That is ridiculous. It's a crazy amount. Uh, this hits almost everything. Uh... I, I can't even guess. Maybe short of an Atog that has too many artifacts on the field, uh, th this will hit everything in the format and then some, unless something gets absolutely insane. Um, how do you make sure Morbid is always triggered? Well, that's easy. Come right over here and take a look. We've got Fume Spitter. Sacrifice it and put a negative one, negative one counter on this. So every time this guy dies, Tragic Slips Morbid is online. Every time we have secure, Sakura Tribe Elders, they, we sacrifice these guys to uh, essentially cast Rampant Growth and look for a basic land card. That'll turn on Morbid also. We've got... Brindlebore. Sacrifice this pig and we gain four life. That'll also turn on Tragic Slip. So we can pretty reliably do it. Guess what? One more little guy, Moldrifter. If we cast him for the evoke cost, he comes into the battlefield and then kills himself. That counts uh, as a creature dying. That turns on Morbid. So almost every creature in our deck will turn on Morbid, meaning that this card is almost always going to say target creature gets minus 13, minus 13. Almost always. Almost. Super fun card. Love it very much. Uh, not a staple, I wouldn't say, but in this deck, it's fantastic. It's only good when you can reliably kill, uh, when, when you can reliably have Morbid online. And here, it doesn't matter that we're sacking our creatures because we always get them back with Disturb Burial and Undying Evil. You smack Undying Evil on one of your creatures, you sacrifice them, they come back, you get the benefit of their sacrifice, you turn on Morbid, and they get a plus one, plus one counter on them. Awesome. By the way, Undying Evil also works with Moldrifter. You evoke him for three. He hits the battlefield just before he kills himself. You smack it with Undying Evil. He dies. You draw two cards. He comes back. 
you draw two more cards, and he has a plus one, plus one counter on him. So you've just spent four and two cards to draw four cards and have a three, three flyer in play. Value. Just, just value. Value all day. Fun tricks. Super cool. Uh, I'm not going to go through the mana base too much. It's a lot of wiki-wacky garbage. This just is here to um, reliably destroy graveyards because, as you can guess, in Popper that can be pretty re pretty relevant because uh, we do have a lot of flashback things uh, over here in Popper. Lots of stuff goes on in the graveyard, and uh, Bajuka Bog is just a, a, a very... I wouldn't say the best answer, but a very good answer for dealing with that. Um, a lot of these lands where they come in tab, they're essentially gates, but they give you a life. So they're strictly better than gates. <laughs> you know the guild gates from Ravnica? Fuck those guild gates. These are better. Uh, these guys are essentially ramp. I've got a couple of these. Maybe I can put in more. I'm not sure. Um, I have these guys in the uh, non-black colors, although black is probably the most, uh, most important color in this uh, deck. That's why I have more swamps and more black producing um, cards than any other. I might want to get rid of Terramorphic Expanse and put in like a couple more of these. I I'm not sure. The mana base is still like up in the air. We can still fiddle with it. Um, not going to talk about that too, too, too much. Uh, Sakura Tribe Elder helps get land. You throw him down. Somebody attacks. You block with your 1-1 one -one just before damage is dealt. You sacrifice this guy, that, that gets you a basic land, and it stops the damage from going through. So, again, slow them down big time, value up. Kroos and Tusker, sometimes you want a 6-5. Just sometimes you want a 6-5. Most of the time, you want to cycle this guy, because he'll draw you a card and draw you a basic land card. So, it goes to your hand, unfortunately. So, um, this guy's mostly a value play. Uh, I can see shifting him around, but it's pretty damn useful to get two cards out of this one guy. This is almost like a draw draw spell, because you get a land and whatever your top top card in the library is. And when you need a 6-5, guess what? You've got a 6-5, uh, if you need it. Not always. Fume Spitter is fantastic. He's very good, uh, mostly early game, but... Um, also okay late game because he's pretty reliable so for six mana and two black you can just buy back disturb burial and then bring him right back and that's just six and that's usually all you need uh if you need this guy to just come in and chump block uh chump block like a five five or or something you know big you need a sacrifice outlet or and, and every time he does by the way you're you're pinging uh permanent pinging your opponent's creatures so they're pretty good uh i don't see any replacements for these guys i run three of them many many uh builds run four because they're just really good i don't i like other things whatever we have crypt rats here who is uh pretty much our one of our win conditions crypt rats is fantastic uh the biggest uh drawback to crypt rats is that you have to only spend black mana on it that that's an argument for putting in as much black man as possible, which I have not done in my mana base. Uh, definitely something to consider, but uh, I may or may not give a shit anyway. <laughs> Crypt Rats is great. Uh, it's definitely a field wipe. I want you to picture uh, sending Crypt Rats out there. Uh, so he's down for three. Four mana, you kill him. He goes to the graveyard, but just before you actually kill him... You hit him with Undying Evil. Then he comes back as a 2-2 who can ping uh, pretty much everything on the board and your opponents for one every turn. Now, I know this hits you as well, but that's why we have Brindlebore right here. Brindlebore is fantastic. Uh, he blocks, he smashes, and when he's run out of his usefulness, he gains you four life, which is pretty significant, especially when you tag him up. Like, let's say your opponent has... Um, Gurmag Angler out there, and he's got a 5-5, five, five, and he's swinging in every turn. If you have a Brindle Boar, you block, and then sacrifice, so you gain 4 life. So you've essentially gained 9 life, or have at least prevented 5 damage and gained li 9 life. Uh, there are ways around that, and there are ways to recur this guy, uh, and that's why this is so awesome. Uh, there's another way to make him awesome, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. We're going to go down to Deep Analysis. Again, another flashback card. Uh, this is just plain old... Um, draw 
not a bad card uh, in my opinion at all. It's fantastic. I know it's a little expensive for a draw two, but that flashback is really what makes it uh, amazing because this is essentially draw four in one card. So once you see this, you know you're going to be going through uh, at least four cards. Uh, it costs a bit, all right? I, I, I get that. <laughs> uh, the three life isn't a big deal because we have plenty of ways to gain life, and we don't really care about our life too, too much. We're, we're usually blocking everything. Uh, we're usually chump blocking everything. Everything we can't chump block gets killed with our removal, and we're gaining life left and right. So honestly... The pay three life, nobody cares. Just like the Crypt Rats, uh, the dealing damage to ourselves, we don't really care. Moldrifter I've talked about a little bit. Um, I try never to evoke him. It, it's so much better to hit this thing uh, for five, but it is a little heavy. Believe it or not, this is actually one of our win conditions. A 2-2 two -two flyer in the air, which we can pump uh, usually to three power with um, Undying Evil or, or one of our equipments. Uh, this thing becomes relevant, especially if we can uh, recur it and can, uh, keep bringing it back. This is uh, probably one of your more reliable damage dealers, even though this isn't like the main win condition. Uh, it is kind of relevant, and aside from that, just drawing you cards, you, you, you've you built a machine, a gigantic mechanism of creature-churning, meat-grinding fun. This is, this is what this deck is. Last but definitely, probably least... Trinket Mage. He, the Trinket Mage is um, probably the toolbox of the deck. You definitely have this. And right over here, we have all the cards that Trinket Mage can get us. So depending on the situation, as long as we have a blue, like let's say we have uh, no black, no green, just like three blue islands in our hand and a Trinket Mage, that's a keepable hand. That's okay. Um, because Trinket Mage does grab artifact lands. Uh, it says... Any artifact uh, of converted mana cost one or less, well, these artifacts have converted mana cost zero, so that's, I think, less than one. I don't, I don't know. I have to talk to my math teacher, but I'm pretty sure that that's av available. We also have Silvok Lifestaff, which is super good. You stick this on everything. It beefs them up a little bit, which is somehow relevant. I know that plus one seems, like, totally ne negligible, but it's almost always relevant. And the gaining three life, uh, remember, these guys sacrifice whenever you want. So if they target it with, like, a lightning bolt or something, you just sacrifice it and gain three life. And then you also get whatever benefit they have. And then you can just probably get it back next turn anyway. Or maybe even this turn. Who knows? It doesn't matter. This stuff is awesome. Um, this stuff is awesome. Executioner's Capsule... Uh, it is an artifact. You throw that down, one black, and then um, one in a black, you tap it, you kill any non-black creature. Not always relevant. Uh, when I'm up against mono black or or creature or players that have black decks, or at least black creatures that I can't really get through, this usually gets sideboarded out. Um, not always relevant, like I've said. But it is, in most of the matchups, really good. It's just another form of removal. You can... Pretty reliably move this right over here and then say you have um, 10 forms of removal. Uh, but I, I wanted to put that over here because I wanted to show that Trinket Mage can get him. So Trinket Mage can get you pretty much uh, anything you need. You need life? Fine. You need a little bit of extra power on your creatures? Fine. You need to kill one of their creatures? Fine. Do you need to ramp to a certain color? Fine. Notice I don't have blue here. Um, I don't have... I, you see a lot of blue spells... But I don't have blue, so Trinket Mage can't actually get the uh, Seed of the Synod, which is the blue artifact land, or the blue mana producing artifact land. Trinket Mage costs blue, so if I have a blue, I don't need to tutor for a blue. That's why I don't have that there. Uh, if I did put a blue in there, it would have to replace one of my more relevant lands, and I really don't want to do that. Some people don't even run two islands. I run two islands. Uh, some people don't. They They just think it's stupid, so... Um, it's a little precious, but we're only doing Tree of Tales and Vault of Whispers and nothing else. That's pretty much the deck. We can take a little quick peek at the sideboard. Uh, sideboard is much more personal. Uh, definitely not, uh, typical. This is a, a weird kind of sideboard. Um, most of the time that I play... It, by the way, this is actually a bad sideboard, so if you're gonna remake this deck, uh, don't. <laughs> okay? But... 
I mean, if you're going to remake this deck and you're going to build the sideboard, you can definitely copy the deck. The deck is fantastic, but the sideboard is a little more in question. Four Naturalize is really weird. There are arguably better cards out there, but I threw it in there anyway because <clears throat> that's why. Uh, four Negates, sometimes people prefer Dispel. I like Negate because I find that this deck doesn't... It, on the creature front, on the battlefield front, my creatures are fine. They're, they, they, I can take care of everything. I kill creatures like crazy, and I chump block them like crazy, and I gain enough life until I get to the point where I can smash my opponent's face in. The only thing that I can't account for, the only things that really, that really, you know, throw a, a screwdriver into my, in, into my machinery, are spells, specifically non-creature spells, and that is why negate is here. It's just a flat, uh, I, I, I would say, um, unconditional removal for any non-creature spell. Uh, Duress is also in there. Duress is a little better for long-term if you want to sit back and wait for your opponent to do something, which in some matchups I want. And Negate is more of a proactive when I'm trying to do something to them, which in other uh, matchups I want. Not sure about the ratio between these. Maybe they should be three and three. I don't know. Soul Reap is my choice uh, to replace Executioner's Capsule. Which, if you've already forgotten, which I'm sure you have, uh, is this card. So if I'm up against black creatures, uh, I'm taking out Executioner's Capsule, which I consider a 3-drop, because if I want to kill something, uh, if I top deck this thing and I want to kill something immediately, I need to have 3 mana open. I use Soul Reap instead. Now you say it says destroy target non-green creature, so that will hit a black creature. And its controller loses 3 life if I've cast another black spell this turn. And that's the that's the benefit that I want. The uh, losing three life is a little Bernie, but exactly the kind of thing that I'm in, in the mood for. Uh, I really like Soul Reap. I think it's an underplayed card. Uh, it is a little awkward, and it can get very awkward, especially when I have to cast a black spell before I cast this one. There are other decks that this works better in, and I'm not saying that this is definitely the best card in this deck. It definitely isn't, but I run it anyway. Speaking of not the best deck... Our cards in the deck. We, I, just me, no one else run Walker of the Grove. Walker of the Grove is in here strictly for his evoke cost. I want you to consider, just for a moment, what happens when I stick Walker of the Grove with Undying Evil. Think about it. Okay. I evoke him down for five mana, right? Just, uh, just before he dies, because he's about to die because I cast the evoke, I cast Undying Evil on him. So when he dies, he comes back. Mm -hmm. He dies, I get a 4-4 because of his ability. Then he comes back as an 8-8. If my opponent kills my 8-8, I get another 4-4. So I just have, like, at, at the end of my turn, I will have an 8-8 and a 4-4 for 6 mana. Okay? 6. And 2 cards. Fair, fair enough, 2 cards. But I love that combo. I think it's fantastic. Evoke plus Undying Evil is hilarious. I know it doesn't belong in the sideboard. I just really, really want it to work someday. I have done it once, but it was in a casual game. What the hell is this card? It looks so crazy. I haven't... Oh, that. Never mind. Um, it's just it's just goofy shit. All right? It's just... It's goofy time. It, no goofy time tonight, but goofy time tonight. Understand? That's the party. Anyway. This is Pig, Tr Pig Trinket, otherwise known as uh, Bugs and Pigs. Bugs because it's uh, black, blue, and green, in, in, in case you're not aware of that, but whatever. <sighs> hey, guys. Let's, uh, let's do a couple games.